Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, well, this is going to be one of those question and answer live streams uh, where um, I answer a question that I received from a um, an audience member or a training library member. And uh, this one's a pretty good one. So um, uh, I'm going to take some time to answer this one today. Um, right, so what does he say? He says, Hello, I hope you are well in these times. I'm not sure if you remember me, but I bought the Real Animator Training Library back in 2017. I also, what's called the live screen library back then, must have been, hey Dylan, hey Maharashi, hey Akal the Warrior, spanner in hand, demonstrate studios, how are you doing? So he says he bought the um, training library back in 2017 and I used to tune into your early live streams on YouTube. Yeah, that would have been when it was called the AMB live stream library. My username on YouTube is, I, I guess if he's got a username on YouTube, he won't mind me uh, disclosing it, Animator Alex. Um, um, and I remember, I remember Animator Alex, yeah. I'm emailing you today as I need advice on how to go about balancing assignments for uni and practicing my animation and drawing skills. I have to do one 10 second animate. So I guess he's in, he's in animation school from what he has to do. Um, I have to do one 10 second animation of a character doing a sequence performance. Okay. Do 11 second animations of a male and female in a dialogue. And I also have to do 15 drawings. Hey, Yanis, how are you doing? I also have to do 15 drawings ranging from designs to self-portraits in different styles and genres. And I still have a month left to finish all of these tasks. How would I go about... So he's got 30 days. 30 days to do 10, 10 seconds with one character, uh, 22 seconds with two characters, uh, 15 drawings ranging from uh, designs and self-portraits. And I still have a month left to finish all of these tasks. So he's got about 30 days to do all that. How are you doing? Good to see you, interactive artist. Um, I, st um, I still have a month left to finish all these tasks. How would I go about balancing work for these while still making time to practice my drawing and animation skills? Thank you for taking the time to read this email kind remarks and then he gives me his name which is different a little bit different to his username so um my response to that um is when people come and talk to me hey cameron black how are you doing when people come and ask me about balance how do i balance my work with my animation training or how can i be a balanced individual or this and that um my straight up answer is is um, don't be balanced. Don't be balanced. Uh, it doesn't, it does, it's not that I feel that uh, there's no such thing as balance, but you've got to learn from Mother Nature. You know, there's seasons. There's seasons throughout the year that balance the, the earth at di throughout the year. You know, sometimes it's too much of this. Sometimes it's too much of that. Sometimes it's too much of something else. It's not all even, even flow on a, on a daily basis all the time. That's impractical. And that's, that's somebody who will never get anywhere. Jack of all trades, master of none. Look at the times we're living in now, for example. Hey, how are you doing? Hello from Greece. Awesome. Look at the times we're living in now. Um, they're, time, they're extreme times. For whatever reason, we're all um, told to isolate, stay at home, don't go out. Suddenly, suddenly an extremity is put upon, upon us and we just have to deal with it. That's not balanced, okay? But the, the powers that be, I mean, conspiracy theorists aside, the powers that be don't know how to deal with this. So they're just doing an extreme to try and solve the problem. So what I suggest to you, um, is if you have all of this stuff that you need to do, and by the way, that's a hell of a lot of stuff for just one month. I mean, I don't want to get into animation school again, but you know, uh, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> 
But if you have all of this stuff to do in just one month, you've got to do a, a dialogue scene with one character, you've got to do, uh, of 10 seconds, you've got to do two 11 second scenes of two characters. So that's 22 seconds with two characters, uh, 10 seconds with one character. That's already like 30, 32 seconds of animation in one month. You're talking about, you know, you got 30 days. You don't even have enough days if you did a second a day. Okay, never mind how many characters. Then you've got to do 15 drawings on top of that. Okay, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. So then you're saying, well, you're trying to pump in the time to do the training of your animation as well. And you're trying to say, well, okay, how am I going to balance all of this big workload and still do my animation practice? Well, it ain't going to happen if you want to do it as best to the best of your ability. That's that's what I'm going to say. So you got to you got to put some things to one side and say, OK, well, this is the time where I'm going to do this and I'm just going to only do this and I'm going to double down on this. I'm going to double down on this. And I'm, once I've done this, then I will go back and I will go back into my animation training. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. So because animation training is very important. Absolutely. But if you are in a situation where you have to get something done at a set time and you have chosen to be in that situation, then you have to prioritize. It's as simple as that. You, there's no feeling guilty about it. No feeling I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, um, I like to train in martial arts, for example, but sometimes when I've got too much workload, I love my training. I just put it to one side. I put it to one side for, I haven't been for a run for three weeks, you know, because I've been super busy and this and that. Does it mean I'm getting unfit and fat and whatever and, and panicky? No, because I know that once I've done what I've had to do, I'll go back and I'll go and overload on the training and do less of my intense work. That's what balance is. There's a season. You know, the farmer understands it. There's an old saying, there's a season to sow and a season to reap, but you can't do both in the same season, you know? And the thing is, if you are sowing at that time, you know, you will reap at another time. So you just got to say, well, I've got to get all of this work done. That's what I've got to do. I have to do all this work. So I'll gonna, I'm going to have to stop doing that. I'm going to have to stop doing that. And if I want to do this work really well, then I'm going to do nothing but this work. If you don't really care about that work, then prioritize about the thing that you want, you care about. That's what I say to you. When I was in animation school, I didn't give a damn about what the teachers asked me to do. I didn't give a damn about their assignments. I, did, I didn't care. I just prioritized my walk cycles, my perspective runs, and somehow included that as if it was part of the assignment. I didn't care whether I passed or I failed. But I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm just suggesting where, where, what is your heart tell you? What's your priority telling you about what you want to do? Throw away all this balance nonsense. You'll even yourself out later. That's the way the mind works. You know, you can't do something forever uh, just one way. Your, your body won't allow it. You'll even yourself out. That's balance. Hey, how are you doing? Ashish. So don't worry about balance. Throw away that word. Um, as far as I'm concerned, just do what you have to do. Throw yourself into getting these assignments done. Now, if you, if you wondered how I would tackle those assignments, I would say, okay, well, um, you'll have to, I'm guilty for listening to my teacher about making animation trailer as well as balancing my thesis with my final major project. But I, in that case, but, but that's all to do with your, your school. You have, to, you have to do a thesis. I had to do a thesis when I was doing my degree. So th that's different. This is, this is, that's kind of similar to what he, he's talking about, trying to keep his animation practice, his private animation practice up while doing all his schoolwork. My advice to him is, is don't do your animation practice. Uh, if you have to get this done and you have to get it done in 30 days, your animation practice isn't running away. Do a good job on this. It's all still animation. You're still getting practice in there. You know, you made a decision to do this degree. You made a decision that I want to do this animation degree and I want to get, get, get all marks in my assignments. How are you doing, Red Fox? So then focus on that. You know, wherever you shine your, your flashlight, that's where you're headed. You know, you can be wandering around in a room in the dark, just shining a flashlight everywhere, saying, now I'm going to do this, now I'm going to do that. Now you wander around in circles. Just go to where you're headed. None of this balance. None of this balance nonsense. 
I'm somebody who studied martial arts. I study Zen. I do medit I meditate every day. So I'm somebody who, who is all about mindset. I'm all about mindset. But all of this preachy, preachy, we must be balanced at every minute of every, you know, bullshit. Forget it. Throw it out the window. You'll never get anything done that way. Hey, Travis Deans Animate, how are you doing? Just whatever your goal is, wherever you want to go, go there. And when you've gone far enough or when you need a break, have a break, switch, change direction. But keep going to where you're going. Now, if you have to do 15 drawings a day, 15 drawings, not 15 drawings a day. If you have to do 15 drawings or something like that, I would say in various styles and various genres, I would say, okay, well, how many hours sleep do you have? Okay. So for the next 30 days, sleep, uh, sleep one hour less, okay? Afternoon, Zentron, how are you doing? For the next 30 days, sleep one hour less. Get up, okay? If you can't get up and just immediately start drawing in the morning, get up, do what you have to do for that one hour, whether it's get clear your head or whatever, but you've got a spare hour. Uh, then uh, start focusing on the drawing that you want to do so you've got you're spending that one extra hour that you that you had in bed on that one drawing how do you meditate i'm curious my key to meditation is listening to music i'll maybe talk about that some other time um the i don't have a wacom pen tablet but i started practice on paper so i want to ask till i wait till lockdown uh, and start well just continue on paper the best, what I always say to people, the best animation ever done in the world, unequal today, was done on paper. Milk cow. Milk cow. You know? Um, Andreas Deja, Glenn Keane, James Baxter, John Pomroy, Ward Kimball, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston, um, John Lounsbury, um, Mark Hen, Mark Davis. I can just keep naming you names. All done on paper. They never had any whack on tablets. You know, some of the best artists, some of the best, you know, amazing Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, Turner, Rembrandt. You know, wh where was the Wacom? You know, if you've got paper, paper, you know, they, you know, uh, you know, uh, get, get that out of your mindset. So at the end of the day, get up an hour earlier, do the work of those of those drawings. And then you've got that you've got your day to do the uh, focus on the animation. Now, when it comes to the, what is it? What is it you said? Let me see what you said. Okay, he says, um, I have to do one 10 second animation of a character doing a sequence performance, okay? Uh, and then two 11 second animations of a male and female in dialogue. I also, okay, so the way to save your time on those is really really plan what you want to do so plan the sequence performance okay so uh, use your time spend more time planning because the execution will be easy afterwards so go on you so if the character is doing a performance think about the performance act it out yourself film it or use youtube reference if he's doing some bark or free running or some whatever use your youtube reference film it make sketches of it Make your key poses of it, okay? Say, okay, by the end of by the end of today, I'll have my reference solidly worked out. Then just throw yourself into it. Throw yourself into doing it. Um, if you just want it to be rough, then it's going to be a lot easier, okay? I don't know if it's if it's CG, then yeah, you know, it's not that hard. So it's not that hard. Um, if it's uh, hand drawn. Then you, you then you got time to worry about. But CG, just follow your reference, knock it out. You know, step tangents, clean the curves, whatever. Um, I don't know if they want it lighting or whatever, but um, that way then the time isn't the time's not much of an issue. Um, the two the two characters, two eleven second sequences of two characters again. Um, study. Get your references. Spend a lot of time. Spend a day if you have to. Really, really working out the interaction between each characters. That one day of planning your your action, planning the charm, planning the appeal. That you. So many people watch animation today. They don't appreciate the the quality of the animation. What they appreciate is have 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 they bought into the charm and the appeal of the of the character acting. You know. 
sometimes it's like the, I mean, anime is a great example that some people just buy into the charm and appeal of what of the story and what they're watching. So if you pick a scene in a movie or you watch a performance and you go and you really pick one little thing, like really identify the difference, the contrast between one character and another character, like he could be over dominant and she could be over shy or she could be over dominant and he could be shy, for example, who's higher, who's lower, whatever. Think about that in the, in the interaction between the two of them. Spend a day on each one and again, just knock it out. So I would say uh, next 30 days, get up an hour earlier, get up two hours earlier if you can. Some people say you need six hours sleep. Some people say you need seven hours sleep. Okay. I think you can go for a month with just six hours sleep. It ain't going to kill you. Um, so get up um, an hour or two hours earlier and use that time. And uh, what you'll find is if you, by doing this also for 30 days, it takes 30 days to form a habit. It takes 60 days to consolidate that habit. So I would say it takes about 60 days. That's why I reckon, I don't know. I don't want to talk about conspiracy. I reckon we're going to be in isolation for 60 days. I think they're trying to habit, mentally habit condition us, but I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. It's just my gut feeling. So I think that there's, um, it takes 60 days to form a habit, uh, to consolidate that habit and keep that habit. So this 30 days for you is going to be a very, very good 30 days. Um, that's going to, uh, condition you actually to really manage your time a lot better. So when you go back to do your animation practice, you'll be a lot more um, disciplined, how can I say, at, at doing your own practice. So that's my answer to that question. Thanks for sharing that question with me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's something it's something that I've kind of, I used to all the time think because I bought into the romantic idea. I loved, uh, I love Karate Kid, the original, with Mr. Miyagi going, ah, da, da, Daniel son must find balance. You know, ah, da, 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 must find balance. I'm never going to be the same, Mr. Miyagi, unless I find balance, man. I really bought into that, and it's the charm, and it's the, it's the, it's the appeal of that. Uh, but I do believe in balance, but I just don't think balance is being balanced all the time. Every minute of every day, I'm balanced and I'm doing this and I'm balanced. And now I'm going to do my workout and now I'm going to do my uh, my uh, family time. And now I'm going to do my work time. At the end of the day, that's just being Mr. Average as far as I'm concerned. It's just being Mr. Average. You've got to really, really double down on the things you want Double down on what has to be done. Double down on the necessary and just work hard at it. And then the time will come when, when, when you tire of that or you will, you will know. My gut feeling will know. Like last week, I, I didn't train much and I was doing more work. But my gut feeling knew. So this morning I trained for an hour. Something inside you makes you go and do what you have to do. Your body will naturally balance yourself out. If, you're, if those things are important to you, if those things are important to you, if they're not important to you, then your body will just keep focusing for what, on what you're doing. You know, So that's what it is. Right, well, that's my answer to that question. If anybody else in the audience has any other questions for me, then I'll be more than happy to stay and take them. Um, otherwise... Uh, I'll I'll think about ending the stream. Um, I hope you're all doing well at this in this uh, time of uh, what you call isolation. For me, um, I live a pretty isolated life anyway. I've always have done. I, people who do hand-drawn animation tend to just, um, I've always been kind of introverted like that. And um, it's just business as usual. I guess the sad thing is, as I was planning to go and see my wife and um, we were, we were going to have a nice uh, time together after I'd come back and spent some time looking after my folks here in England. I wanted to go back to my home in New Zealand. And uh, now that's been delayed and all that. So, um, so yep, doing the same, taking pick, practicing. Thanks for the advice, really appreciate it. My, thank you, uh, my pleasure. So that's the only downer, not being able to uh, go out when you want to go out and all that stuff. Or, but ultimately, it's just business as usual for me. Um, I'm just getting on with my work. Um, I mean, um, I think it's an opportunity for everybody uh, uh, to get to know themselves better. 
a lot of people don't like themselves. A lot of people find it really difficult to be alone with themselves. Um, what do you think of the things I posted? I, I, uh, Red Fox, I, I reviewed them for you. Go and look in the, go and look on, do you think the universities best prepare students for commercial animation practice with respect to the points you've just made about planning your time? Okay. The, I have to go back to work, have a good day. Hey, see you, Travis, good man. Keep working on that. Uh, it's looking awesome. Um, Red Fox, I gave you a review. It's posted on the, on the wall of the uh, Growth Development and Progress Group. Um, I posted, I reviewed people's work. If people can't even be bothered to watch the video, I'm not saying you, Red Fox, but the thing is, is why should I tag people in that video? Like, I, I give, I've spent my time, I've reviewed it. You've got a two-hour stream. Some people want to spend two hours watching, uh, watching, I don't know, Game of Thrones or whatever crap is big on Netflix right now, whatever shit, you know. Uh, but but and then and then their work's been reviewed in the stream, but they can't be bothered to scroll through it. Well, too bad. You know, it's on the wall. It's there for you. Um, so go watch it. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not directing that uh, aggressive tone with you, uh, Pedro. I'm just putting things as they are in terms of a general like, you know, in terms of a general output. Like I've reviewed this work. It's there for you. Uh, go watch it. Uh, so that so I've reviewed your work was the first work I reviewed in the video, Pedro. So um, I think every um, university course that's teaching people for the industry should uh, teach people time management. Yes. Um, it, it should, should, you should learn a little bit about time management. In the library, I don't teach people time management because I'm just teaching people animation skills. But if, if, is it right to concentrate only on the things you like? I mean, if someone said, I want a pretty character, but you like nasty things to draw. Well, that's not really the, that's not really the thing. Because the real thing you like is, is if you want a pretty character, even if you want an ugly character, it has to be pretty. It has to be drawn well. So you have to learn the, you have to learn the human body. You have to learn, you know, when I say focus on the things that's important to you, I don't mean the things that you, you know, I don't mean the dopamine, okay? I don't mean the things that, you know, the quick fix. I said this the other day, like, human beings are wired by something called dopamine, okay? And all it wants is it's your natural instinct of your reptilian brain wanting to feel good now. I want to feel good now. I want to feel good now. I want a quick fix, okay? So that isn't focusing on the things you want. Because that's not, wants and needs are very different. You need to focus on what you need to do to get what you really want, okay? Not your quick little fix. Not your quick little, I want to draw pretty, I want to draw an anime, I want to draw Disney, I want to draw this, I want to draw that. That ain't, that ain't, fo that ain't focusing on what you want. That's focusing on your instinct, your instinct to just feel good now, okay? But feel good now doesn't last. You know, feel good now. The problem with feel good now is, is like once you feel good, you don't feel good anymore and then you look to feel good again and it's a it's a it's a you know cycle of doom what you want to do is you want to focus on what you need to do so if you want to draw pretty characters whether you feel good now drawing and studying anatomy or not doesn't matter you ain't going to draw pretty characters properly unless you study anatomy you ain't going to draw ugly characters properly unless you study anatomy you you might make an ugly drawing Either way, if you don't study anatomy, but, you know, or study shapes. If you, if you want to, that naive kind of illustrative look, even those people understand some kind of harmony of shapes and something about their subject matter, negative space, this and that. You can't get away from that. So um, that's to do with uh, needs. Needs and wants are different, very different. Uh, most people focus on the wants. That's why 90% of people are failures. Um, and that's not me being mean. That's just what it is. You got 10% of people who, who are successful or 9% of people who are successful. 1% of people who are extremely successful. And the, 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 the rest of the 90, um, yeah. Uh, and when I say successful, it, it varies. You know, successful at particular things. I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about people who are good at a sport or people who are good at drawing. So that 10% varies at, at different things. 
So ultimately, yeah. But then when it comes to going back to the school things, if, if yeah, if you want to learn, if you want to learn how to be good it, and it's not just down to school it's down to you as a person as life skills don't just put it all on the school you know uh, time management uh priorities that's what separates as i said was i i'm in university for animation and the program is mostly 3d i don't tell you that up front um you should have done a bit of digging. I, I, I mean, I don't know, but really, I mean, if you're going to do an animation degree, um, it's, it's a, you, you must have gone there with an eye for what you wanted to do. You must have said, well, I like 3D or I like 2D. And then surely they, you must have looked at their prospectus and read what they had to say. Maybe they didn't tell you it's mostly 3D. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I, I don't think I, 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 you know, and I guess it's a given that there are going to be a lot more 3D animation courses uh, around. Uh, and even the 2D stuff that's being taught is the 2D computer puppets, which is to me just like 3D, really like a inferior version of 3D. But um, so hand drawn is harder to find, uh, but but you got to really ask uh, the people you got to really look this is it a lot that's what that's what i was saying it's like what separates the people who really get stuff done compared to the rest is that extra that little extra that you put into yourself you know i always like to say that do your work not just your work and no more but that little extra more that little that little bit more for the lavishing sake that little bit more which is worth all the rest and if you doubt if you must and if you suffer as you must do your work Put your heart into it and the skies will clear. And then through your very doubt and very suffering shall be born the supreme joy of life. What does that mean? That means that little bit extra more that keeps you going. That little bit extra more that makes you a cut above the rest. It ain't about competing with others. It ain't about comparing yourself with others. It's just about valuing yourself, having enough belief in yourself, having enough self-respect in yourself to put that extra bit in and go the extra mile all the time. Whether it's expected of you or whether it's not expected of you, whether the information's given to you or whether it's not given to you, that doesn't matter. Do your diligence. Put in the time, put in the effort to make sure that you can be as good as you can be at all times. So that's, that's, that's the way my personal outlook on it. It's so easy to point the finger, but if you, I always like to point the finger like that. And when I'm pointing the finger like that, my thumb's pointing right back at me. It's like, well, he said this, but what did I say? You know, or what did I do? Because there's a law. Whatever you put out comes right back at you. So, um, so always, always try to take responsibility for yourself in every situation. Um, so, yeah. Um, and that's exactly what I'm doing at the moment in, in these times where, um, as I said, to me, this isolation thing is just pretty much business as usual. It's like, oh, well, uh, I don't leave my house unless I really have to anyway, because I have to, you know, I like to sit at my desk at all hours and make, make a film all on my own or create a library of animation videos. How do you position yourself while animating as to not get uh, fatigue after an hour or two? Well, here's the thing, like, it's, I can go for 14 hours straight, but that's not a true thing, because in the middle of that, I might stop for 10 minutes, and I might, I might go and whack out some press-ups, or I might go and, like, do an hour of exercise, I might go and stretch in the splits, I might go and bust out some pull-ups. And this is all, you know, there are different ways to work out. And I'm not just talking workout, so hear me out here. Some people like to do one big session. Other people call this thing called thread it, threading the needle, I think, or whatever. Spinning, I forgot what the, the term is called, where you do a little bit, you know, 10 minutes, and then you go back. And then, and then throughout the day, you've done your two hours or your one hour of exercise or whatever in little 10-minute bursts. So I, I sometimes vary. Or even in that, like, I'm not really interested in watching TV anymore. I used to watch Columbo or Quincy or Rawhide and things like that. I used to just sit down and have a little break and watch something like that. Um, just to spaz out or play a, a round of Street Fighter on my iPad. 
But either you get what you get what I'm saying, Drewby. Basically, like when you're sitting down all uh, working, just if you if you're if you're kind of a little bit fed up of what you're doing, just stop doing it. Um, do something else. But here's the thing. If that thing really, really matters to you, if that thing's super, super important to you, uh, you will have a natural urge. Like whatever I'm doing, I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go back to my desk because what I was doing on my desk was so awesome that I can't wait to finish it. Like um, that's what that's what it is. And it's good to have a, an audio book. I, I recommend either audio book or somebody asked me about meditation earlier. Sometimes I just meditate. I just meditate. Um, the people don't like the word meditation because they think it's um, it's kind of guru, new agey or hippie or whatever. But I'm cool with that. I've, I've been a martial artist all my life. Meditation to me has uh, has always served as a good purpose to to relax my mind, to calm, to still my chattering mind, uh, which is my conscious mind and 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 uh, think about what, what I want, the things that I want to do, the things that I want to achieve. Um, and then I come out fresh, like I, 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 still, I still the chattering mind and I'm ready to go back to what I was originally motivated to do in the first place. Um, you got to think it's like your heart and your head is like two different things. They're like one, one guy's, I, I always think the head is, his head is like an impatient little, like your heart wants to do something, but your head is like an impatient little servant who says, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. But he's bored. He wants to do something else. He's like doing a job. He gets distracted or whatever. And like, basically he starts trying to like take over. But like, so that's when I just say, okay, well, I'm distracted now. So before I would play a game or work out, I still work out, but now I just find just sitting down, closing my eyes, stilling my mind. Um, I, I feel great. And I just go straight back into doing my work. Um, so whatever, whatever is a, your way of winding down, I would say is uh, probably the best way for you to um, not be fatigued. Um, you got to stop looking at your work as if it's work. Okay. Um, that's great. I've been looking for a way to get myself to exercise daily. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's just a little bit like um, we go through phases like I'm so glad that I, I, I went through my phase of like hardcore martial arts. There was a time when I, I didn't know what I what, should I be animation or should I pursue martial arts? But I just preferred animation. And um, but I, there was a time where I went through that working out for four hours a day, working out two hours in the morning, two hours in the night, you know, living the training life, going for road work, all that kind of stuff back in my 20s, you know, going and sparring in the morning, sparring in the evening, all that kind of stuff, you know. But now there's, there's also, it doesn't have to be a big session. You know, you can just sit down and you can just like, as I said, like I can just bust out a hundred push-ups in under five minutes. And sometimes that's enough. That's enough to just keep me by. Am I big and huge or have I got rippling chest? Not, not, not what I used to know, but I don't care. That's not what I want anymore. You know, I'm fit. Um, I'm healthy. Um, I've had a break from my work and I'm carrying on with my, I'm carrying on doing the things I love to do. And, I, you know, so I highly recommend some kind of physical activity, even if you stand up from your, like somebody was telling me online the other day, they do squats. Yeah, just stand up from your chair, do some squats, you know, get your body in such a condition so that w working out doesn't have to be a challenge. Get your body like, now, I remember I could never do the splits or whatever. Now I can get myself in a position where like maybe after like five minutes, I'm in the full split. That's five minutes of my day. I've worked my, my flexibility. I can get back on, get back on with my life. I don't have to do anything else with my flexibility for the rest of that day. And my body's in a good condition for me to do my work. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's something to, to, that's probably what I would say that that's, I don't, but that's not being balanced. I was about to say that could be being balanced, but that's not being balanced because I'm clearly spending more time on my work. So that puts it in perspective back to the original question about being balanced so anyway there we go it has been an absolute privilege to um 
to sit down and answer these uh, this this question. If if you guys have any more questions, then fire them away or um, just ask me. Like this guy has uh, emailed me a message, posted on the uh, Facebook Growth Development and Progress uh, group, or comment on a YouTube video. Comment on this video. Um, uh, your particular animation related question animation art life related question and i'll be more than happy to share my experience with you um so then in the meantime what i will do you like my bone dragon i haven't seen the bone dragon i just saw uh i'll have to look at it later hang on let me see have you posted something new i've just saw your leaf animation and i saw your um I saw your, uh, what is it now? Um, your flower sack. So hang on, let me have a look. There's nothing on the wall here um, at the moment. So I'm not sure, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what you, you, you were talking about there. Um, I'm not sure what you were talking about there. So I, I'm... I don't remember any bone dragon uh red fox so sorry about that um but yeah so uh yeah okay so <laughs> thanks a lot for joining me on the video it was a nice uh yeah post it post it in the group it was a nice little get together and uh stay safe um stay focused um keep shout out brother awesome my pleasure, Akal. Uh, Akal, um, hope you're doing okay. Hope you're doing okay. Um, stay safe, stay focused, and use this time as an opportunity to get to know yourself, your other self, better. Thank you very much for answering those questions. I'm writing my uni notes for art history as I listen to this. See you, Dylan. My pleasure. Yeah, get to know your other self better. Get to know the the the... the you, when you spend more time with yourself, you learn a lot more about yourself. And then you, you, you can learn about the things that you like. And thank you. You can learn about the things that you like and learn about the things that you don't like. And then you can start working on yourself. And that will actually help your work a lot more. Maya animation tutorial. Uh, I'm not really the person to do a Maya animation tutorial. Um, I... I have supervised CG people. I have done animation in Maya a long time ago, but I don't, I'm not a, primarily I'm not a CG animator. So uh, even though I still, uh, I could probably sit down and still do animation in a computer, I probably wouldn't be able to find myself anymore because they've probably changed the interface. They've probably changed. Somebody told me that they don't use, there's something else now. I, I used to use step tangents and I used to switch over to spline and clean the curves in the curve editor. I don't know if that's still the way they do it. I would still knock out great animation that way because ultimately you I treat the step tangents like I'm treating drawings, keyframes, extremes, poses. You work in the... Okay, here's my advice for any 3D animator that's listening to me. Even though I don't really do 3D animation, um, I've done it. And when I did it, I was quickly made a supervisor in a, in a small boutique studio. And then after that, I've, I've directed animation for Lego. The screen is divided. When you animate, don't animate in the perspective window. Don't animate in that re real world space, okay? Um, what is better? Well, what's better, coffee or tea? Chocolate or cheese? Or, uh, chocolate or cheese? Chocolate or strawberry, you know? It's up to you what you think is better. Of course, I'm going to say nothing's better than hand-drawn 2D animation. Uh, puppet, puppet animation, uh, you know, um, that kind of 2D cutout puppet animation. I think that's just primitive. Uh, that's just not even worth bringing into the equation. Um, uh, it, it can't do what hand-drawn can do, and it's trying to do what CG is doing. They're trying to build puppets now in, in Toon Boom that that move around as if they're like 3d and just build a 3d puppet and sell shade it man i mean it just it looks shit it looks shit you know if you want to have the hand-drawn look draw it by hand 
You know, it's like saying, I want a black guy in my film, but we'll get a white guy and we'll paint him up to be black. It's just like, fucking draw it. You want it to look drawn? Draw it. If you want, like, if you want, if you want it to look 3D, 3D. That's why I find it so funny. We're living in a Hans Christian Andersen Nightingale world at the moment with the 2D rigs. I just, it's just crazy. People are so, so wanting to save time that they're using this, 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 destroying the art of animation with this stupid tool. But anyway, yeah, if you like 3D, you like 3D. It's, it's, uh, if somebody said to me they like 3D more than traditional, I could understand that because they, they, it, it's two different things. 3D gives you real world lighting. 3D gives you all these kind of things that traditional doesn't give you. Um, so if the, but then for me, traditional is more artistic. Traditional is just better. I like to look at drawings. I like to look at, I like to go beyond the realm of 3D. I like, I like to see drawings and artwork and paintings move. So, but anyway, but tips, if you want to do good 3D animation, uh, yes, you need that 3D world, that perspective, uh, free, free rotation camera worldview to kind of refine your animation, but always have your locked shots. What are your thoughts about 2D characters in 3D backgrounds? Yeah, that's good. You have your locked off shot, okay? The, the camera shot is the most important. I really like your frankness, so it's so refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can only be me, you know. So your camera shot is the shot that you have to care about. But then you've got your perspective shot. And the beauty of 3D is, is you can have the camera and see that the pose is working from every angle. So always have your front angle and your side angle and turn off all the lights so you can see them in silhouette or the pose is strong enough. Animate them working, animate your keys and extremes in silhouette and front view because then, then your perspective view is going to look kind of good because you've managed it from the front and the side. Okay, so you manage those two then your perspective pose, then you can push the pose in, in, the, in the camera, in the locked camera view. So you can divide your screen and see all those different cameras when you're doing a 3D animation. Don't get caught up pulling and playing about and watching it move in the, in, in, in the one view. Okay, so if you're a beginner 3D animator, okay, think about, uh, think about animating like that. It's all about making, a, all about the nice pose. Um, real animators aren't in it for... Well, I mean, honestly, like at the end of the day, it's like um, he's 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 asking all sorts of quick fire questions. I mean, next uh, he's you know he might he might ask me uh, my trouser size or what whatnot. Who knows? I I don't know. But ultimately, I'm here to help people, um, and I'm here to give people um, advice. Um, when it comes to balancing and prioritizing wants versus needs. Uh, how should one balance their studies in larger projects as a beginner? Well, as I said, um, when it comes to your um, when it comes to your wants and your needs, okay. If you are a beginner and you want, what is your goal first? Okay, first you you can't just. You, need, you, you have to establish your goal. If you say, I want to make a film, okay, well, you can make a film. And you, do you, what, now, what kind of film do you want to make? What, kind does, do, what do you want it to have good animation or weak animation? You can make a film and you can hire an animator to make that film. There are many ways to approach a goal. So this kind of question is very, very small and in a, in a, in a, in a little thing, but, but I'm going to presume that you're talking as somebody who wants to do animation and wants to be good at animation, but you also like having a play. You also like having a play. Let me, I like contrasting animation with the martial arts or with gymnastics. I'm not a gymnast. I kind of wish I did gymnastics instead of martial arts. Now I'm a bit older because I kind of, I would love to have that freedom with my body even more than what the martial arts gave me. But anyway, I digress. I compare, like to create this comparison because when you're drawing and, and you, you know, the consequences aren't as, the consequences add up because you, you can draw like that all your life and then when you're 90 go, oh my God, I never achieved anything. What a miserable wretch and then just die. You know, I'm sorry to put it that bluntly because lots of people waste their life 
doing the wrong things and then they live a miserable life thinking they could never cut it. But if only they had approached it the right way. So it is, the consequences are actually worse for something that's less harmful in an instant shock. But I'm going to use the instant shock to explain to you what this is all about. If you want to be good, if you want to do animation well, if you want to, let's say, let's just say you like anime and you want to be really like some of those anime drawings are really, really nice. The way they draw the drapery, the folds on the clothes, the muscles, the things. And those guys can draw those characters from any angle they want. They don't just copy one picture and draw it like that. And, you know, no, and they can bust them out in, in a matter of minutes. I know. I know they can do that. Those guys are bloody awesome. Let's just get that straight. You know, they don't sit down and, and sit down and spend a week on one drawing, you know, or spend, a, spend a, you know, and then, and then, you know, post it on Instagram and get all the love for it. But, you know, those guys just bust it out in five minutes, 10 minutes, you know. So you want to be like that. OK, well, you can't just get that without without doing the training without studying the stuff that you need to study to get that, okay? So now let's parallel that to the guy who wants to be a gymnast. He's never done gymnastics before, but he likes to do his, his homemade gymnastics in his house. He, he's learned to kind of handstand in his house by putting his whatever. He goes on there on the gymnast, and the, the, then he goes you know, to, on the high beam to try and do his stuff. He's going to fall and break his neck. Or you got the guy who likes to teach himself martial arts and practice cage fighting with his big burly mates who'd never fought or never know anything and he's beating them up and he thinks he's kind of good. So I'll go into a into an, an MMA school or a whatever school and I'll try my luck and he'll go against somebody. He'll get it. He'll get choked out or he'll get his butt kicked, you know. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't know. He's thinking he's good. He's thinking he's done all this. He's put in. He's put in a lot of energy. And surrounded himself with morons, think being the king of the king of the garbage heap, king of the mountain, but it's all garbage. What was that line in Akira? Yeah, Tetsuo, you're king of the mountain, but it's all garbage, man. Yeah. So it's like at the end of the day, if you want to be good as an artist, as an animator, then you have to put aside your instant gratification of doing the things that you've been doing and say, these are the things I need to do and I will do what needs to be done in order to get where I need to go and have what I am going to have. Okay? Not I might, you're going to have it at all cost. So you will do what you need to do. That's what it is. At the end of the day, you say, okay, well, I want to be an, a great anime animator. Does that mean you stop drawing anime completely? No, of course not. But what it means is, is that most of your time is spent learning the things that you have to learn. Most of your time is spent learning the muscles of the human body, the bones of the human body, learning about how to, you know, the poses, the negative space, what to just shot, shot compositions, perspective, learning those things. Then maybe spend about, spend about, uh, I, I would say like, a good example would be like, maybe five days do the, do the important things and then for th the other two days, spend those two days studying anatomy and the way they use those shapes. So for example, if you were going to do an anime guy, um, uh, you would study the scapula for a week and then study the muscles that go on the scapula, okay? The teres major, the infraspinatus, the rhomboid, you know, all those kind of things that go around there, the deltoid. Then go to the anime and see how they draw those things. Spend five days on the scapula, two days on the anime scapula area. Spend five, you know, that, that's how I, Jojo's animation is shit, but I bet they took a long time studying bones and muscles. Oh, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about there, so probably. Um, 
Yeah, so ultimately, I would say that you got to go after the things you want. Hello, amazing AMB and all your... <laughs> Thank you, Michael Elliott. How are you? You have to... You have to have a burning desire for the things you want. You have to have a definiteness of purpose. You have to really, really understand what it is you want. And if you really want it, you will do what you need to do to get it. If you just kind of want it and you think, OK, I've done my drawing practice. And you think like um, four hours is a lot of time for some people, you know. I think Fellowship, one of those Lord of the Ring movies is almost four hours. You know, that's a long time to waste for me. OK, but like for, 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 for many people, four hours is a long time. They go, I drew for four hours today. Whoopie doo. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to do some gaming. I'm going to I'm going to go and hang with my mates and I'm going to do whatever. I, I feel like I've really, you know, I've really had a productive day. Delusional, delusional, you know. Throw that away. That ain't somebody who's serious. That ain't somebody who's serious. Four hours is just getting started, mate. Four hours is just getting started. You know, okay, you spent four hours on the scapula. Now, now you're getting a little bit tired of drawing the scapula. Okay, so why don't you do a little bit of anime scapula or anime drawing for one hour to get yourself, get yourself that, dopamine fix feel good now then go back and and then think about animating the scapula okay well i know what the scapula looks like but how does it move what about when it's in this position what about when it's in this position well you know what happens to the muscles on there what happens to it in relation to the trapezius you know it's so when you look at things in a sense of what is it you're trying to do? It becomes so much easier. If you are just running around like a headless chicken with one general thing, like I want to, I want to be good at animation. I anime, anime. I'm going, I'm drawing anime. I'm, do, I'm making up my own anime. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. It's just, it, it literally is running around, going around like a sail, a uh, ship sailing with no map, you know? Let's go here today. Let's go there. Let's see what we'll what, let's see what we'll find. You know, that's a, that's the, you know some people are spontaneous like that. They like to live their life like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem with that is, is if you, for for goal orientated people, for people who actually want to get stuff done and want to get stuff done well, I don't prescribe or advise that kind of mentality. So. Um, the real thing is, is it's all inside of you. You can listen to me talking about it, rambling on, going, going back and forth, saying the same old things. But each and every one of you could solve it in a day. All you have to do is close the door, turn off the background music, sit down and think and ask yourself, get a notepad, get a pen, ask yourself, what is it you really want to do with your animation? And then ask yourself, now, how am I going to do it? Your brain knows. Your inside knows. But you want to hear it from other people because your outside doesn't want to do that. Your outside wants to carry on doing what it's doing. The quick fix the feel good, okay? So you wanna hear it from somebody else. Maybe he'll say what I wanna hear. He'll done it, he did it that way. So I can do it that way too. That's, that's, all, that's, that's all I can say. That's all I can say about that. Well, hopefully I've given you some, uh, some uh, insight into that. As, all, all I can say is, is that was a good question because it goes back to my thing about balance which is what the original questioner asked me about, is how to be balanced. There ain't no balance. Uh, there's just periods, there's seasons. Uh, what, what is it? Winter, uh, summer, uh, winter, spring, summer, autumn, or you guys call it fall, back to winter again. 
that balances the whole year out. So you've got to live your life in seasons. You know, there's a season to sow, there's a season to reap, but you don't do both in the same season. At the end of the day, there's a time for you to do the sowing. Then the reaping will come later. My, I'm, I'm living reaping right now. I sit down, I draw whatever I want, animate whatever I want, breakneck speed, and it kicks ass, and I feel good now. I get a dopamine fix from looking at my own work, and I love it because I'm reaping from all the sowing that I've done. But the time will come when I will have to sow some more because it doesn't last forever. You don't get satisfied. You, you know, we don't get, once you're satisfied, it doesn't last long. And it's the same with what I'm doing in the, like I, I got fed up of the industry. So I started doing this. I started AMB animation, real animator training. It's growing, it's growing. It's not where to where it is yet. So I'm still excited about it. I'm still, but once it gets to the point where I kind of think, well, then I've got to be looking at doing something else. And that's what it is, sowing and reaping, seasons. That's what life is. Nothing stays the same. You're either creating or disintegrating. You're either going one way or the other way. Even when a body is dead in a coffin, it is not still. Otherwise, how does it decay? You know, there's movement all the time. So you're either creating or you're disintegrating. You're either going one way or the other. And ultimately, I know which way I want to be going. And I think you guys know which way you want to be going. So it's like, let's work out how we're going to do it. And let's keep on doing it. Nothing stays the same. I wake up and I'm hearing you and I've made some animations, but I need to practice fundamental drawing. One have to realize that learning takes time. Well, I'll tell you what takes time. It's not the learning. Okay. Learning is never ending. Learning is never ending. What takes time is worrying and thinking about things taking time. That's what takes time. Worrying about, oh, I don't know. I don't want to do that, but I have to do that. And Because once you're in that process of growth, I've had people join my Real Animator training library and they have gotten good in the blink of an eye as far as I'm concerned. But some of those people just crept up on me. I didn't even expect them to be where they were. They're just finishing the intermediate archive. And I'm saying, that guy just joined, you know, the last quarter of last year. And he's doing stuff better than what people did. Graduates coming out of animation school. He's, uh, he's doing stuff better than what people are doing in the animation industry today. Uh, in 2D puppets. Um, it only took him about four months. That doesn't mean he's, he's finished. He's still got a lot to do. And it's, it's happening to a lot of people. So... Once the decision is made and once you're in the process, there ain't no time to worry about time because time is an illusion. Time is a measuring cylinder that we humans worry about because we fear death. The universe is, is just limitless. It's just space. <laughs> we make the time. Where the guys go thinking about, oh, I don't have time to do this, I don't have time to do that, I don't have time to whatever, I don't have time. At the end of the day, you really won't have no time because you've spent all that time worrying about time. So ultimately, throw away the fact that you think learning takes time. Do it and you'll realize in no time you will be where you needed to be. And you'll be doing things that you will just think to yourself, how did I even get here? It was so fast and it was so good and I feel so good because I did it. So the thing that takes time isn't really time. It's worry. It's worry, anxiety, irritation, frustration and fear about doing the thing. Just do it. Do what needs to be done. It will be done. That's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about anybody who says that it's going to take time. Because ultimately, we put our time into things, hopefully, that are worth it. Well, we should be. But I think a lot of people don't value their time enough. It sounds, you sound like Deepak. Who's Deepak? I don't know. Um, you, you put some time 
You put your time into things. You should be putting your time into things that you value. But most people put their time into, <coughs> into things that they don't really value. Uh, that just fit, give them a quick dopamine fix. And then they worry about putting their time into things that they really want to do. You know? Some guru. <laughs> Gurus. Guru. If I was a guru, I'd be speaking a lot slower. I'd be like, oh, how, do, how are they going to? The heart and the head. One is master, other is slave. Which one? <laughs> That's if I, the AMB guru. I don't claim to be a guru. I'm just, I'm just sharing, I'm just sharing my um, experiences, and I always say that I talk about it with such certainty because it is my experience, and I know it. But that doesn't mean that I ain't gonna change it. I'm going to change my mind and I change my opinion to whatever it needs to be in order for me to keep growing and getting where I'm, I need to be getting. That's what it is. Because if you hold on to things and you, 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 you put, a, put a crown on things and say that is that and that's the end of it, you have killed it. You are, you are creating the history books and then you're just going to live your life by that. That used to be me a long time ago, now it isn't. So if somebody says to me, you said this back then, now you're saying this, I'll say, yeah, now I know better. Now I know better. Big deal. You know, isn't that what life is about? Getting better, knowing better. Throw away the pride, throw away the ego, all that kind of thing. Just do what you need to do. What is my goal now? My current goal now is to build uh, Real Animator Training more and more so that we start making projects. We start making projects, we start releasing projects, and the Real Animator uh, Training people are involved with those projects. So already I've, I've been dabbling with that as the library is growing and we are getting more members. Um, and those members are now starting to get pretty uh, proficient at what they're doing. Uh, I've, I've given some of them a few commissions. I would like to do more. Um, I would like to expand things more. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's just one of my goals. Um, so we just keep working at them. We keep working at them. But my ultimate goal is to just be, I've got a cramp in my foot now, and I'm trying to like style it out. I really just want to go, ha. Ah. <laughs> Okay, my ultimate goal is to just be as good as I can be, you know. Excuse me while I just fix my cramp. Franks makes movies. If you could uh, type that question again, that would be very much appreciated. You see, I'm glad that I have studied my training skills in stretching because this is a super painful cramp right now. And I'm just stretching my stretching it out um so yeah so we've all got different goals um the most important thing is to don't set them in stone um you got to kind of say to yourself is it something that's why i said you got to sit down and really write it out and think it through is it something that you really want to do is it something that you see yourself committed to. A lot of people say, I want to do animation. I love animation. But what it is, is they like to watch animation. They like to watch animation. And they, I was just commenting AMB worth thousands deep actual, because on top of the philosophy, you get the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, because they that's what i say you jump head in without thinking about it you say okay well i like to draw animation i like drawing in my spare time okay people say i like drawing and i wish i could make an animation i wish but then they think that's what they want to do but then when they find out what's involved the commitment isn't there uh and they don't want to do it so ultimately um 
if you if people just sat down and really just spent a little bit of time really thinking about what what it is they want to do you know they would save themselves a lot of heartache and they would save themselves a lot of time which is what we were talking about earlier and uh worry on realizing well this is for me and i'm going to do it or this is not for me and i'm not going to do it so ultimately that's that's what i have to say about that and now my cramp has gone and i can sit here and feel nice and happy about <laughs> about it but there you go okay and on that note um, I think, what are we now? We are now 65 minutes into this live stream. So I have sat and rambled on for an hour. Um, and I honestly think that, that, that an hour is a good time. Um, do you want to be as good as you can be in order to create or just as good as you want to? <sighs> I guess the thing is, is I ultimately... I want to express myself uh, with my work. I want to express myself with my work and I want to be able to express myself to the best of my ability. Presently, when it comes to my work, I'm in a good place right now. Um, so my personal... Um, ambitions and personal goals are not necessarily dr driven towards being a better animator at the moment. That will come again, I'm sure. But presently, um, I'm, I'm uh, helping and guiding others with my skills, but I'm also working on my own. I feel now is the time for me to create content as well and put stuff out there. So I'm uh, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. And um, I don't care about... I now feel that my... I'm now feeling a good place with my work. So the thing is, is to know what you want um, and to, to not compare yourself with others. I heard being good as you can be is actually being free. Yeah, well, I feel free because at the moment I feel I feel great about my work. I feel there's, there's nothing that I could... I can... Uh, there's nothing that I don't think I can do with with character animation. There's nothing. If somebody asks me to do something uh, with with character animation, uh, I would say, yeah, um, I, I can do that. And I can do that well. I can do that to a high standard. I can put it across. Um, so you could say it's liberating. But um, as I said, but that's that 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 wasn't necessarily my my goal. Um, and as I said, goals are constantly changing. It's ultimately, I would like to express myself. I would like to express myself in a way. And then the, the bigger you get in what, you, in, in the goal you're trying to do, you'll realize that you need other people. So this is the practical thing. Like some of you see that I, I do, I'm now creating my own project and I'm painting my own backgrounds and doing all those things that's nice you know but i'm not so fascinated with being the world's best background painter or the world's best um you know illustrator or that kind of thing i i the animation is what i know about the filmmaking is what i know about and the bigger the project gets the bigger the idea gets you will then have to collaborate with other people you will then have to bring other artists, bring minds together who are good at what they do. Microsoft isn't just Bill Gates. Apple wasn't just Steve Jobs. Disney wasn't just Walter Elias Disney. You know, all of these things are not just, do you think you might do some videos about animating hand-drawn effects for the library? Maybe. I get a lot of requests about that. Um... I might do an effects archive. It, effects is not something I've really focused on. And I do think that effects animation, um, it does take skill and it takes uh, passion and observation and imagination and it involves abstract, uh, being able to adapt things in an abstract manner. So, But I do think that if you understand um, 
the laws of animation and you know you know how to look at reference through those laws then you can pretty much um do effects quite quite straightforwardly um i i'm not one of these people that the you know it, it isn't it isn't as 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 easy as all that because you have to again it's down to abstract shapes it's down to you know because doing a straight up effect is one thing but then making that effect look beautiful and abstract is another thing thank you so much man for everything you do and for who you are if only you had an hour to practice every day Oh, I missed the, the rest of that question. It sounded good, but thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, so maybe I might. I've, I've still got to do a muscle archive in the, in the training library. How important is it to be a good draftsman if you only had an hour to practice every day? What would you practice to learn uh, from a, an animation and drawing? Okay. Okay. Well, that's a great... That really is a great question. For me... Um, I think being a good draftsman is premium. I think being a good draftsman is extremely important. Some of you people hear me say when you're learning animation, it's not important to be a good draftsman at the start. You don't need to have your drawing. In. Yeah, I say that because animation is animation. You've got your 12 laws of animation and drawing is drawing. You've got your drawing. Now, in order to be a good animator, you need to have them both. It's like... You know, to be a good athlete, you can't just have a strong upper body. You need a good core and you need a good pair of legs, you know, or you can't just have a good pair of legs and, and a weak upper body, you know. So to be to be the complete thing, to be a, a, a good animator, you need both. But if you would say to me, um, how important is drawing? I would say drawing is very, very important to be a good to be good at drawing. Um, drawing is what it's all about. Drawing. Drawing to me, I saw a TED talk the other day and I couldn't agree more. What should, I recommend you, a lot of you people, if, if 42 of you people are, are, are enjoying listening to me, thank you very much. So it seems that you guys have got patience and you guys like to maybe think a bit deeper. So I recommend, I recommend you guys, while you're doing your work, to listen to things like TED talks and things like that. Very, 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 very insightful. I couldn't agree more. There was a guy doing a TED talk about drawing and he was saying about not just drawing from people who can draw or artists who can draw he was talking about um thank you he was talking about uh drawing basically is one of the most human things we can do and it's kind of been discarded as something for artists or children you think about it when a child is in the wor in the world and they don't know any language what do they do to get their feelings across on the page they splash they do symbols of color they draw mommy and daddy holding the little baby as stick figures um <laughs> thank you akal they draw mom and dad holding the little stick figures uh they want a happy family that's what they draw they draw all these kind of things, how they're feeling. And it's not childish. What it is, is it's communication because we don't think in words. We think in pictures. We think in images. Our brain forms images in our mind. We use those words to describe images. Words are powerful. Language is powerful. The written word is very powerful. I'm not belittling that. But we think in images. We think in pictures. And if we draw those things onto the page we are immediately communicating in the most direct way whether we're good at drawing or whether we're not good at drawing we are immediately communicating in that way on that piece of paper what we are thinking in our subconscious in our inner eye what we can see is being expressed and that's why somebody asked me why do you love hand-drawn animation or 3d i love hand-drawn animation purely also because of those reasons it is the most purest expression uh, whether it's yes you have the styles and all that but drawing is the most purest expression from the inside to the outside as far as i'm concerned it is the most more so than any other because uh, or music Music is another one. Sound and image. 
Yes, the sculpture sculpts, but the sculpture has to know the tool. The sculpture, you know, he needs tools to sculpt. We just pick up at something, whether we can draw, whether we don't. We go, here's a circle, here's two eyes and a mouth, and that's, I'm happy. You know? Instant, bang, like that, before the image fades from our mind. That's why I love drawing, and that's why drawing is so important. And when you want to be an artist, when you want to be an animator, and when you want to express clearly and emotively to your audience in a way that touches them, then wouldn't it be great to be good at that? Wouldn't it be great to be able to convey it in the most clearest, definite form? <coughs> You know? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna now go about that in an hour. Like I'm tackling this question. I'm tackling this question. So at the end of the day, it's like so if you so you've talked about like is so that's my answer is drawing important. What do I think of drawing? You you need to be a good draftsman. Yeah. Yeah. So that's got that out of the way. Now if you only had an hour a day, okay? If you only had an hour a day, okay, I would say it depends on what you want to draw. But I would like to say that since we are human beings, okay, since we are human beings and we are in this vessel, which is a body, and we all relate to the human body, I would say I would focus on the human body. I would focus on the human body. And I would focus on the human body from inside to out. I would go bone by bone. I've got this book here. Okay. No, not this one. I've sure many of you have seen this, but since I'm sitting here anyway, I would focus bone by bone. Okay. I've got a horse here. Let's just bone by bone, muscle by muscle. Okay. And they're not hard things to draw, okay? They're just bones. They're just shapes, okay? So spend one hour a day, okay? An hour a day, it all adds up, bone by bone, okay? Until you got a bag of bones, okay? Don't be intimidated by it because if you think these drawings are good or, or whatever, don't be. Look, whatever you know, just muscle by muscle. Fill the page, fill the pad, muscle by muscle, bone by bone, until you keep keep getting better and better and better and better until you keep start filling this thing, okay? More and more. So, and what that'll teach you, okay, is very, very important. What it'll teach you as you spend an hour doing that is it'll give you hand-eye coordination, okay? Because you're copying, okay? You're copying and you're developing your hand-eye coordination, okay? Because hand-eye coordination is very, very important, okay? So, and then I would tell you to focus on shapes. So, make when you look at me, you look at an outline. I'm making the letter W right now. Okay? One, two, three, four. Train your eye to see shapes. I've got the letter L right now. Okay? Or it could be like Z lying down this way. Train yourself to see shapes. What is this? It's a square. It's a straight line. I can't believe I just asked the master of his craft a question and you get an answer. So, but my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. So just understand to look at the bigger picture. So you see this, you see hand. Say, no, I don't see hand. I see a sort of fan-like shape, okay, with a square, okay, divided into with two Vs, okay, two Vs here. And kind of like a, a letter there. Just, I see shapes, I see shapes, I see shapes. So let's break that hour down. 20 minutes of shape 
visualization, shape, shape, shape. Don't care what it looks like. You're not trying to impress everybody. When you sit down and you try to curl, what have I got here? Oopsie. I sit down, you got to wait here. You try to curl it for the first time. Uh, you're in private. Uh, you, you're you not showing it to anyone. Okay? You're not showing it to anyone. But then eventually you curl it. You do whatever you have to do. You don't show it to anyone. You know? So the thing is, is like, those. that's your private time. 20 minutes, fill up a sketchbook with just shape study. 20 minutes, then study the line, the detail. 20, 40, 60. The other 20 minutes, have fun. Copy. Try and draw your wife. Try and draw your daughter. Try and draw whatever. Spend your hour a day. Break up the hour. Do it like that. We got the phone things now to do all those things. So, ultimately... Um, that's what I say to that. And if you wanted to learn animation, you know, I would do it the same way. You've got principles, okay? There's, um, there's 12 months in a year. For one month, spend each hour of each day on one law. So the first law, you would be timing. Learn about timing. Spend an hour a day learning about timing. Learning about timing charts, learning about bouncing ball, swinging pendulum, learning about arcing. Spend the next uh, month on arcing. So you see, an hour can be a very useful amount of time. And you'll realize, as we were talking about time earlier. Yeah, this is staying up on YouTube. This, this, this. I, I guess some people say that. They would pay to listen to me, but <laughs> I, I'm just hanging out in my parents' house because some of you know I'm in England uh, at the moment looking after my older parents. I, I want to go back to my house in New Zealand, but <laughs> we're in lockdown at the moment. So I'm just hanging out talking to you guys. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So the thing is, um, you... Uh, we were talking about time earlier. So you realize that a lot can be achieved in an hour if you do the right things. Okay? And then soon you won't worry about time. If you look at people with beautiful bodies, some of those people only train an hour a day. And then within six months, they got a pretty beautiful body, right? You know, so um, a JPEG, a jog fills drop by drop. There you go. Um, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so it's just about what you need to think about. To be completely vulnerable, I don't believe I can get better drawing. I've had this limiting belief any ideas on how to overcome the mental barrier yes auto suggestion auto suggestion okay human being is nothing but a, a habit a collection of habit patterns okay you are the sum of what your your present thoughts are today okay you basically have built an identity for yourself and every day you live by that identity. Um, you can change that identity at any time. Um, but it, it will take, as I said, it will take 60 days. Um, and I don't want to get into this. I think we're being isolated by certain people for 60 days because they want to, the, 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 the mass consciousness has to change by certain people. But I don't want to get into that. That's, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. And, you know, I could be wrong. But what I do want to get into is the, the one thing I do have control over is myself, not, 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 not anybody else, not you, not anybody else. And what, the one thing you have control over is yourselves. 
And you must realize that you can. I, I have done it. I've done it on myself many times. Um, through the power of auto-suggestion. So, you need to think about qualities that you would like to have. And then you need to write out a sentence of yourself in that and repeat that to yourself every morning and every night. It'll sound like a fantasy. It'll sound like a fiction. You'll sound like you're being fake. But I tell you what, you tell yourself that over and over and over and over again and make it a habit, you'll start finding out that you'll start becoming that thing. You'll start finding out that you'll start doing things in those ways. Because what you have is you have a paradigm inside of you. A paradigm is a long, is a, like a big wall of massive habit that basically that's built up. And it, and it basically is an identity. It is an identity that has been built. And you can break that identity down whenever you want, but you have to choose to break it down. And of course, it's not just going to be broken down like that. It's going to resist you because you, you built it up over years and years and years. So when you try to change it, why do you think people who want to lose weight, ne some of them lose weight and immediately get back, back get, get, get big again? It's called psycho-cybernetics. Okay, psycho-cybernetics is basically the best way to describe psycho-cybernetics is, is you're a cybernetic organism when your psychosis controls you. So basically, if you have like a, a thermostat or an or a, or a aeroplane on autopilot, that pilot has got a, a course, a, a destination. Okay, and no, I don't believe in fake it till you do. There is no faking it. Okay. What you need to think of is, is like basically instead of living, living, your, living in a memory, you create a future truth and live, live according to the future truth. Don't, don't say fake it because you, you start auto suggesting yourself that you're a faker and you'll become a faker and you'll never make it. Throw away that crap. Throw away that word, fake it till you make it. Bullshit. You know, don't be a faker. Believe in what you're doing. Believe in it. So the thing is, you, the plane is de, de, going to this destination, okay? So you could go like this. The law of attraction is, is one thing, but the law of attraction is determined by the law of vibration. And the law of vibration is how you feel about it. So you ain't going to attract anything that you don't feel that you believe in. So at the end of the day, if you think you're this, and even if you go up here, you will gravitate back to this. Or if you go down here, you will gravitate back to that. So whatever you inside think you are. So if you tell yourself over and over again, I've got a mental barrier. I, 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 I'm, I'm too afraid. I can't do it. Well, that's the way you're going to play it out. So you need to tell yourself, you need to tell yourself that basically I'm this. I'm going to do this. And this is what I am. And you need to start seeing yourself as that thing. And if you start seeing yourself as that thing, uh, but here's the difficult thing. You have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. The conscious mind is based on your five senses, okay? Sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. And here, yeah, sound. So basically, that's looking at the physical world around you, okay? We live in a cause and effect world, okay? People, people are looking at the cart instead of the horse, okay? Everything is like... Is, is there's first cause, there's cause, okay? You are the cause. If, if I want to come on a live stream, I think about it. Somebody has invented a phone. They thought of the phone in their mind. The, the phone in my hand, the thing that we're all enjoying, enjoying is the effect of a product of the mind. But most people are looking at the physical world around them and living back to front. They're looking at effects and they're letting those be their circumstances that drive their actions. You need to change it and flip the switch. You need to say, well, it doesn't work that way because this world around me is an effect of, of the causes of other people. You know, you can say, well, what about the trees and what about those things? How to advertise your art online, seeing as you've done such an incredible job creating this platform. Thank you, Asmira. Advertising your art online is, again, pretty much what I'm telling you now. Um, at the moment, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I feel that I, I need to be better at it. But once I have done what I've needed to do, I'm going to start uh, talking 
creating courses and creating um, products for people, for artists who want to um, thrive and who want to make money from their art and who want to succeed. I'm going to start doing that once I've finished with the training library. I'm going to start helping artists understand and realize because it's not just about the art, it's about the mindset. Understand and realize that, yes, you can, you can succeed in your art. You can achieve, you can thrive, you can make money, and you can, you can live a good life. So, ultimately, you need to realize that you are the cause, and the effects are around you. So, the only reason that you're not able to do what you want to do with your art and you're saying your mental barrier is holding you back, well, you know what's holding you back. So take down that barrier. Take it down. The reason why you'll find it hard to take it down is because you're looking at the effects around you. You might take it down for a minute and start doing what you're doing, but then the effects, somebody might go, that's crap, that's rubbish. <laughs> He thinks he can draw. Look at him. He thinks he can draw. Look at him. Put it down, son. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> People will start talking to you like that. And it won't feel nice. And then you know what? You'll sink your psycho-cybernetics back into safety. You know? You'll start, basically, you'll go right back into safety. Right back into the comfort zone. Yeah. Because you tried, to, you tried to do something and other people laughed at you and you couldn't take it. Well, that they are the outside. They are affecting your conscious mind and then your conscious mind is chattering to your subconscious mind saying it can't be done, it can't be done, it's all wrong, it's all wrong. And then, you're, then, you're, then your subconscious mind says, all right. Because your subconscious mind is where the real power that does the work. The subconscious mind keeps your heart going, it keeps you alive, it keeps you, when you want to go and pee, you don't decide I need to pee. If you're busting, you bloody well pee. You might be holding it for as long as you can, but your subconscious mind is saying, we need to pee, we need to pee, and eventually you go and pee. So at the end of the day, the subconscious mind makes you do things whether you want to do it or not, because that's what, that it acts in your own interest. But the subconscious mind has been programmed by your parents, your peer groups, your school, your environment. All of the years you've been growing up, it's been building your identity and you've had very little say in those things. Very little say. And at the end of the day, you're living your life by those people's standards. You're living those lives by those people. Is staging good? Staging's a great law in animation, yeah. You're living your life by those people's standards you're living your life by the way other people have programmed you you just don't know it and when you want to live the life the way you want to live your life you're too scared you're too scared because your subconscious mind suddenly gets an idea from the conscious mind well i want to do this so the subconscious mind thinks well okay i'm gonna try but then the conscious mind with the receptors little antennae on top of your head kind of thinks no, no, they're making fun of me. They're laughing at me. Nobody's, nobody's liking my works. I've only got like five likes. I've only got like 40 followers. Um, I've been at this for a year and I should be there and I should be here. And Nobody's sharing my work and he's better. He's got more. She's got more and they're crap. And this is no good and whatever. And I'm feeling like, I feel like shit and I don't want to do it anymore. Wah, 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 wah. So basically the conscious mind then sells the subconscious mind. Now this ain't going to happen. So the subconscious mind hasn't built up enough of a program. So we go right back to square one. And that's why um, you have this mental barrier. The mental barrier can break, but you need to use the power of auto-suggestion, which is telling yourself these things over and over again and turning off the background noise. Turn off your phone. Turn off your social media. Don't watch the news. Do you want to know how I can stay so happy in these times? I don't watch the news. I don't care. I don't care. Whether I want to know or whether I don't want to know, I'm going to find out who's, who's been isolated and whether the Prime Minister of Great Britain has gotten infected by the virus or whether I want to know those things or whether I don't want to know those things, I'm going to find them out sooner or later. But I will keep my phone and my social media off and the media off for the most of the time. Oh, but you need to know. You need to know. Well, do I? Do I really? 
How much do I need to know? How much of my time should be spent needing to know? You know, as long as I know enough, as long as I know what's going on by law for me to do certain things, that's enough for me. I'll get back to, I'll get back to the things that I want to do. And so that's what I'm saying. Help your conscious mind. Allow yourself to have the strength to live life on your terms. Feed your subconscious positive ideas. Morning, noon and night. Three times a day. Repeat your statement to yourself. I value the news too. I hear what I need to know. I agree. I avoid the news. You know, I was wondering that. Yeah. yeah. So the, the news is wired. When I had doubts in myself, I started making assumptions that I couldn't accomplish something. And I always ask myself, like, says who? Yeah, exactly. Look, the news is not for free. It's, it's funded. It's a business. And the news, love, the news knows how human brains, are, human brains work. The news knows that we, you're all animals. They know that you're, you've all got this basic uh, instinct for survival. They know what the reticular activating system is in the brain. They know what the fight or flight is. They know what dopamine is. They know how to play to you. They know how to keep you constantly watching them. They know how to get their figures rising to justify the large amounts of payment they have when there's no need for them in this day and age with social media and people sharing news all the time, what they want to call fake news. So at the end of the day, um, uh, Watching that stuff, I'm not telling you, if, if you want to watch it, watch it. But I'm talking from the terms of people who want to succeed in stuff that they really want to do in their, in their heart of hearts. It's going to be very difficult if you're surrounded by a negative environment um, with people saying no all the time. And this can't be done or that can't be done or it's futile or think of, you know, think of others. You know, you should be grateful. You've got a, 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 a roof over your head. Yeah, well, gratitude's a good thing. But then don't use that gratitude to justify why you should put away your dreams and, and you know, you know, uh, you know, just spend the rest of your life doing what you don't want to do. So that's what I have to say about that. Um it was, uh, I kind of went off on one there, but um, I like to, I like to read a lot of books. I like to um, spend a lot of time listening to a lot of audio. Um, so, and, and uh, currently where I'm at, those are my conclusions. And I've found that they've, they've helped me a lot um, when I decided to quit the industry. Um, one of the reasons I can talk so profoundly about this and so just piss it out is because I immerse myself in it because when I was, was was quitting my animation job in the industry any advice I took to heart is finding success in failure yeah well failure is great because for me failure is like every failure I have is 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 like a stepping stone to success because you know if, if it was that easy, then it wouldn't be worth talking about. You know, if it was as easy as, 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 as having a shit, you know, then it wouldn't be worth talking about. It would be shit. You know, what makes it worth it is, is what you put into it and what you've learned from it and what you've got out of it. And that's what failure gives you. There's a difference between failure and quitting, you know. So ultimately, yeah. So when I decided to quit the in animation industry, I had a lot riding. I had like many years of, of my life had been put into that and I just wasn't feeling it anymore. And, I'm, and I was feeling these people on the internet that were kind of, I was never a huge YouTuber, never. And I'm still not a huge YouTuber. And I don't know if I even want that, to be honest with you. Because it takes, a, you know, that, that kind of YouTuber life is not the kind of life that I want. I don't mind sitting down raw and unplugged like this, you know, but, you know, um, the kind of YouTuber life of glossy edited videos and all that, it's not for me. I don't want to do it. So, but, but I had a vibration, which is what attraction, we were talking about the law of attraction. I had a vibration from a certain amount of people that really loved what I wanted to do and really wanted to learn from me. And I said, well, you know what? 
that why don't I channel into that? Why don't I see what I can do about teaching people hand-drawn animation, bringing hand-drawn animation back to standard and doing something for real? And that's what <coughs> eventually became the real animator training library and eventually became AMB animation. And in order to, to, to become this, I had to cast off the old Urshad Mirza Beg and become AMB to do that, which is which is when I say that I'm still known as Urshad Mirza Beg and I'm known online as AMB, but I'm just a consciousness. I'm just a consciousness that is wanting to express myself in a certain way at a certain time. And I had to study. And I had to study psychology, the brain, the mind, um, in order to understand how best to approach this thing. What was the thing you struggled the most with when you were learning animation? What we're talking about here, mindset, getting out. And that's why I, that's why I, I teach the way I do. I get straight to the point. I go, right, I talk hard, I talk rough, I'm, I'm, I'm brutal. I get straight to the point. Let's kill the emotion right now because if you want to get where you're want, needing to go, then get out of your own way. Stop being a crybaby. Stop being whinging, moaning, wah, wah, wah. But I want to. I feel good drawing this way. I've drawn this way all my life. Well, that way hasn't fucking worked and you're going to waste the rest of your life. This way works. Just do this now. When I'm teaching people hand-drawn animation, I'm teaching them the way I would speak to myself if I met myself as a young 20-year-old. I'm saving them time, I'm saving them tears, and I'm saving them everything by giving them it straight up front. So the biggest struggle learning animation was is I know all too well what these anime fanboys that some people think I pick on are going through because I used to be exactly like them, but for Walt Disney. I want to draw Aladdin, I want to draw Jasmine with her big eyes and her nice hourglass body. I was just the same. Just the same. And I wasted a lot of my time. I could have been so much better than what I was. But I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm better now. I'm doing what I want to do now. And I'm saving my people the people who join the training library, the people who learn from me, the people who value what I have to say, I'm saving them the time by, by getting them, telling them, don't do that, please don't do that, because I did that and it didn't work. This works. And I see it, I see it and I'm really happy because now I see people achieving things in, in a matter of months. The last 30 is exactly why I love you. Besides, thank you, thank you so much. So that's basically the thing that I struggled with the most. And what I've learned about that is, is now I apply that to everything. I apply that. I try to apply that to everything. I ain't perfect. I'm, I'm just like everyone else. I'm just an animal with a, an advanced form of animal with a, with, a, with, a, with a higher level of consciousness, with a, with a level of awareness. Okay. With the, with the capacity of being bored. So I look for dopamine fixes every now and then. I, uh, you know, I want to do something instead. I, I want to feel good now myself. I don't want to do what needs to be done when it comes to learning uh, how to advertise my business and how to promote my business, how to do whatever. But then sometimes I say, okay, you want to spend a thousand pounds a day on advertising just to get the result, then just, just bite the bullet and do it. Feel the pain, spend the grand a day understand what that feels like, get the answer, make your conclusion and work on it. Rather than wasting time, oh, shall I spend, but then what if I lose the money or this and that. So now I apply that, what I've learned through my mindset of that, I apply it to everything or I try to, what I am consciously aware of. I have so much that I need to work on for myself as well. Right, and on that note, guys, I feel my throat is is getting a little pain now, but not because of any um, any virus or anything, probably because I've just talked and talked and talked. And I'm going to give myself a, 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 my vo vocal cords a bit of a rest now uh, because it's, it will affect my immune system. So I'm going to say to you guys, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, keep on working so hard. 
to think I was going to go after the first 30 minutes. <laughs> well, I love, I love you guys. You know, uh, all 35 of you in the audience right now, we, we've had a great chat and it's been lovely hanging out with you guys. Hopefully I've made your isolation a little bit more uh, entertaining and uh, we'll do this again sometimes. Uh, keep the questions coming. I don't mind sitting in front of uh, sitting in front of my phone with a with a DIY wall that probably needs a bit of paint on it. <laughs> the cleanest white wall I could find in my parents' house, you know. <laughs> but there, but there you go. Okay, so anyway, thanks a lot, guys. See you later, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye.